What is going on guys? We are back with another video today and we're doing something a little different. Of course, we've done NFL videos before, prediction videos and whatnot, but I've never really done a recap video. I know the Packers played, you know, a couple days ago technically, but mainly this will be talking about the Packers, but I will talk about the AFC side and obviously the Buccaneers versus the Saints. So it's mainly Packers, but it's still going to be kind of just a recap anyways and the potential prediction going forward. We had our prediction video, but I didn't go in depth really. And, uh, of course, some of those predictions were a little off. I, like I said, though, I felt like Tampa was the team that everyone was sleeping on. Uh, they got to play the Washington football team, even though they didn't, you know, particularly play super well against them. I mean, let's be honest. It was basically a freebie. And honestly, if you look at this game going against the Saints, not saying it was a freebie because there's more players than Drew Brees, but the way Drew Brees is built this late into his career, it limits your offense so much. I'm not saying I would have started Taysom Hill, but there's a good chance Taysom Hill starting wins you the game. I'm just saying. I just think he he challenges the Buccaneers' defense a little bit more than Drew Brees could. And, of course, with that arm strength, you have to be almost dead perfect if you're Drew Brees. That arm strength was lacking super hard this year. Probably should have retired last year. It sucks to see this happen. But, hey, they got close. Say what you want. Uh, regardless. Uh, and of course, talking about the AFC side, the Chiefs versus the Bills. Don't want to talk about them too much, honestly, because after this weekend, it's kind of looking like an NFC Super Bowl win. I'm just going to be honest. Unless some major injury happens to the, the Buccaneers or Packers on their way to a win, you know, Brady or Rodgers gets hurt, you know, on the final drive or something, you know, I, j I just think it's a Super Bowl win for the NFC side. It's just Tampa and Green Bay just look built better than either team, the Chiefs or the Bills. I just don't think the Bills, even though they have played really well on offense, I don't think they have enough weapons to challenge either Green Bay or Tampa. Uh, their defense has played, you know, once again, they've always overachieved on defense. I feel like they've always played above their talent level, even though they do have a really good secondary. Uh, it's just, I just don't think the Bills have enough on offense. Their run game, I just don't think can do enough against Tampa or Green Bay. I think maybe it's enough to, to beat the Chiefs, uh, considering you know the, the Chiefs were able to, able to stop the Browns, even though they weren't perfect on the ground defense. They did enough to make Cleveland you know come out of it at times. So, I mean, I just think if Cleveland can't win the a game, a game against the Chiefs with Mahomes out, assuming Mahomes is in, I just don't think Buffalo can do it. Uh, Josh Allen's played really well, though, and Diggs... Probably challenges every single Chiefs defender, even Tyron Matthew. So, I mean, Diggs probably will have a big day. But I just think, once again, I think Buffalo needs a little bit more talent on offense. Just a little bit more. Maybe the Bills do pull off the upset. But I think even if Mahomes is out, the Chiefs have too much talent on offense. You know, Baltimore just, I mean, going into the playoffs, they probably had the worst receiving talent. Hell, you can even debate running talent outside of Lamar, right? I mean, there's just, I don't think there was a team less equipped receiving talent-wise, right? I, I just, the Ravens don't like to get open. I don't know why. They just, they just, they don't like to get open. So I, I think the Chiefs challenge them way more than the Ravens could. And ultimately, I think the Chiefs will win that game. But once again, I think it's an NFC Super Bowl win. So we will talk about the NFC side. Tampa versus the Saints. It was a kind. It was kind of a hard one to watch at times because honestly, the offenses didn't look that great. They really didn't. They both looked like they were not trying to win. And of course, the better. I know the Saints are supposed to have this amazing defense, but the way the Buccaneers fly around the field on defense, I just feel like it just makes it so unpredictable. You look at a team like the Packers, and they're a real streaky team on defense. Sometimes they look absolutely locked down. Sometimes they just get torch down the field the difference between Tampa and Green Bay even though I think both have that streakiness to them is the Buccaneers they can get to the football that's the difference they take the ball away so they're so you know when when I think of the Packers if they're getting destroyed down the field I'm, I almost think there's no chance at a turnover at all when the Buccaneers are getting destroyed on the field I'm just like all it takes is that that one slightly delayed throw, and that fast defense is going to undercut that ball. I just don't see that from Green Bay. Now, this isn't the prediction part. I'm just kind of looking at the defenses, mainly talking about the Saints, Buccaneers. Even though I brought the Packers up. As far as the Saints go, once again, with Drew Brees, 
I think he limits your offense too much. He just can't get the ball down the field like he used to. That throw power, it just, I mean, it's not like he had the greatest throw power ever even when he was entering the league, but right now it's just, you know, EA says it best with that 81 throw power or whatever it is. Um, you, you gotta be perfect pretty much when you have less in throw power. And of course, when you're not able to, you know, bring it downfield, they don't have to allocate as many resources. Like I didn't really see the defense too much because I kind of was, I was watching the game in the background while doing something else. So I didn't get one, get to watch every single play start to finish. And of course, even if I did, you don't get to see the full frame anyways. But I can't imagine the uh, the Buccaneers were playing too far off. The thing about that is though, once again, I'm kind of going back and forth between games. You kind of don't have to do that against Green Bay either in the sense that even though Green Bay can stretch the field and obviously Rodgers can hit the throw, the Packers do super poorly against press man. It is it's insane. You you man press against us and we are like locked. I don't know how to tell you. You need those motions in there and of course Green Bay does those a lot. I just think that the Buccaneers have such a fast defense. That's what that was the the big key point of before this game for me talking to people I know and whatnot they just have a fast defense I think that's the best way to describe them you know their linebackers are easily the most athletic in the league as a duo uh, they just fly around the field they're, they seem like they're everywhere at all times which of course with Rodgers I can admit over the years sometimes he takes a little bit longer to take that shot I know it's funny because he's got like I don't know if he has it this year, but he's always had like the the quickest throw, uh, snap to throw outside of you know those like maybe not per play, like it's like per average outside of the long ones. I don't know how to explain that, but like he always got the ball out quick. But he does kind of seem sometimes like he'll hesitate if it's not wide open. He might not throw it. And I just don't think you're going to get those looks against Tampa's defense. I think over the middle is going to be very tough to hit, and that's you know a spot we. I mean. We do hit the sidelines a lot, but it seems like on the clutch third downs, that's where we look, and those are the most, uh, you know, turnover-worthy plays I'm going to see. I just think Tampa's defense is just so prone to taking the ball away. I just think they make better plays than they do mistakes. It's crazy how they're, they've are they been severely underrated. I don't know if the ratings are showing a different thing, but any game I've watched Tampa's defense, it just seems like they get after the ball. Of course, they've had some pretty bad games this year. I mean, even against the Saints themselves. But I, I just don't like placing that defense. That defense scares me, man. Of course, the ground game, that's where you're going to have to absolutely destroy. But Green Bay struggled against the Buccaneers on the ground with Vita Vea getting injured in that game. So I don't know if he's been healthy. It seems like he's a name that just almost never comes up every time I watch them play. But if he's healthy, I just don't see how the Packers win that game. And as much as like everyone keeps saying, oh, the Packers are going to destroy him. Oh, it doesn't matter who wins, Saints or Buccaneers, Packers are going to destroy him. I don't know if I'm just too hard on this Packers team. Maybe I am. I just don't see it. The offense looks pretty good, but looking against some of those elite teams, I get it. The Rams are supposed to be, you know, the number one defense. They've had some easy games. They've had some games that, you know, you really think, well, is it really the best or did they play against a team that really isn't built to score or put up points or put up yards anyways? I just think that the Rams, especially with Donald playing at half uh, strength, uh, even though I, I always say, I don't know why I'm fixated on saying this, Aaron Donald was seen by me and anyone watching jumping around pregame. He was literally jumping around, like talking with his, you know, his teammates and whatnot. I don't know if he re-injured it during the game or whatever, but start of the game, 100% Donald. I don't care what anyone says, 100%, unless he's dumb. Unless he's dumb for jumping. Like, if you have rib issues, if I have an injury, hell, if I am him, I don't jump at all. I mean, we've seen what happens when when NFL players jump, especially bigger guys. Their knees can go. And, I mean, you got rib issues, you shouldn't be jumping at all. But he's jumping before the game. I couldn't, I can't think that Donald wasn't playing full strength, at least for the first quarter and a half, at minimum. Elton Jenkins is such an underrated talent. If David Bakhtiari was healthy for this game coming up, I would have so much faith in beating Tampa. I just don't like the edges. I think Tampa Bay is one of the best blitzing teams in the league. I think the stats probably do 
reflect that as Devin White had, what, near double-digit, maybe even hit double-digit sacks as an inside linebacker. And Rodgers, you know, against the Blitz, not always perfect. Not always perfect. He looked really good against the Rams. Even though the Rams didn't necessarily get pressure on him all the time, you know, we can look back at that that near safety situation. To us, it looked like a safety. To Rodgers, he knew he was getting that out all day, every day. But I just think that the difference is the Rams, they're, they're such a traditional defense. Play good coverage, beat your one-on-ones on the line. You know, they really didn't blitz that much, and when they did, it wasn't successful. The Buccaneers are like, fast, fast, fast. Let's run around this guy. Let's stunt them in the inside. Let's just make it tough on him. Let's run, run, fast, fast, run. Like, it's it just, it, they're so unpredictable. And I think Rodgers does bad against speed, right? Like, he needs a guy. He needs to kind of see what's happening, right? He, he doesn't know. If a guy's coming out of nowhere, which, I mean, it's tough for any quarterback, you know, it's going to be a challenge. And I know I'm going a little bit too much about the Tampa Bay defense. Of course, the the Buccaneers offense, those receivers. Green Bay obviously has a shutdown corner in Jair. They have two safeties that can obviously uh, damage you. Uh, mainly near the line of scrimmage. Rather, I know they play back in Amos. You know, he, he kind of moves around a little bit. But uh, he kind of disappears in games sometimes, which is not a bad thing. But even if Gronk is super aggressive like he is... He's going to be a problem. I mean, Green Bay, we already have injury issues at the inside linebacker position, but just pure talent-wise, it's not a good matchup. There's so many good receivers in Tampa. It's, I mean, I don't even know who covers Scotty Miller. That might be the biggest name of the day for all we know. It really could be. I, I just don't know how we match up against them. I think, once again, it's going to be a battle of defenses, and I just like the matchup for the Buccaneers more than Green Bay. It's, it's not going to be a game like Saints versus Buccaneers. The Packers aren't going to be able to keep the game close with their defense. I'm just going to be honest. I just don't think that's going to be the case. It's going to be a game where Green Bay is probably going to need to put up near 40 to win the game. I'm going to be honest. It's going to be probably near 40 to have a chance to win this game. Hopefully the cold weather does affect the rest of the Buccaneers team because obviously this whole like Brady might not be ready for the weather. I don't know if people just started watching the NFL this year because they watched Tampa Brady, but like... He's been in cold his entire career, so I'm not really sure where that argument is. I'm not worried about Tom Brady. Maybe a little bit because, you know, he is older. Cold probably does affect your muscles and whatnot when you're older, but a little bit more than when you're younger. But Rodgers ain't no young goat either. He's a California boy, even if he's played here his whole career. You know, I'd say it's pretty even, at least quarterback-wise, with the cold. But, yeah, hopefully Tampa's uh, the rest of their team maybe not ready for it. Um, But, yeah, I mean, looking at this game... What is the big point? I think Green Bay has to run the ball well, which is obviously what they're going to do. I think Tampa's going to try to run the ball well. I think they're going to run first, but if Green Bay can get them out of it, I don't know if they want to, though. Honestly, I think you want Tampa to run the ball. I just don't think... I think you have a better chance to stop the run with that front than you do to stop the receivers with your secondary. As good as Savage has been, Amos has been, and and Jair has been, I just don't like the other corners, man. Sullivan can make a play here and there. King can come up with a play. King's been, you know, decent. I, I just think you throw to the opposite side of Jair and you're going to be beating us all day. So I think the run game, it's going to be the run game, especially in the cold, that is going to be the main factor of the game. I mean, as pure running games go, you probably give the edge to Green Bay. As pure defense versus defense go, I, I, I don't know, man. Green Bay on paper should have the run stopped. And even though they've done well lately, They've gone again. Well, I don't know. I think, I think the Tennessee Titans run the ball kind of similarly to the Buccaneers, right? I feel like they do. They both have uh, backs that are kind of similar. But I will say the Buccaneers once again talking about speed look a little bit faster in the ground game and that offensive line once again comparing that to you know the Rams or any other team we've stopped the Bears. Their run games as of late they do have a much better line. So. Man, I just I just think Tampa matches up better than Green Bay. And even though I did have Green Bay in the prediction for my video, like I said, I mentioned it many times. I think Tampa probably wins it. But as a Packers fan, I'm gonna say 38 to 32 over Tampa this week. And then of course Kansas City. Uh, if Mahomes plays, eh, 34 to to 27. If Mahomes doesn't play, maybe. 27 to 24 I don't know why the score would change too much for Buffalo but 
it's a close one. If, if Mahomes doesn't play, I think Buffalo probably wins. If Mahomes plays full, full strength, I just don't think they can stop the offense. I really don't, even though Buffalo's played really well, and I would love to see them. I would love, if I could see it, I mean, even as a non-Packers fan, I would love to see a Packers versus Bills Super Bowl, but, um, well, I mean, I would have loved to see a Bills versus Saints Super Bowl, but obviously the Saints are out of it, so I want to see the Buffalo Bills uh, make it to the Super Bowl, even if they beat, let's say Green Bay wins, and the Bills win against Green Bay in the Super Bowl. I don't care. I mean, I care, but... I'd like to see it. I'd like to see the Bills in the Super Bowl. So even though I think KC will win, I want the Bills to win. I think it would be a great story. (laughs) Tom Brady leaves that division. The Bills are like, well, we out of here too to the Super Bowl. We gone. Uh, But of course, those are my predictions. Let me know what you guys think. Maybe I'm off. Maybe there's a Buccaneers fan here that is like, Bro, you, you are giving us way too much credit, man. The, uh, our defense has been super inconsistent this year and whatnot. It's just any time I see Tampa play, that defense looks scary. Absolutely scary stuff. Uh, but those are my predictions. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think from you know a personal fan view. Maybe you're a Chiefs or a Bills fan. Maybe you're a Packers or a Buccaneers fan. Or maybe you're just an outsider. Maybe you're a Rams fan or a Saints fan. You can have your own insight about the teams that won or something, you know, Ravens, Browns, whatever it may be. Of course, we will have a video later today. I probably could have released this a little bit later in the week, but I kind of want to get it fresh in the mind, get it out there. And uh, we will have a Rams video a little bit later today and a stream at around 9.30 or 10 p.m. Central Standard. I shouldn't say 9.30. Let's be honest. I'm going to be at least 15 minutes late <laughs> on Twitch.tv slash Jerome Care, probably playing Bulldogs franchise and Washington franchise and that's pretty much it. If you guys enjoy these types of videos, please leave a like more than any other video because if you know you guys start liking these things, I can maybe start talking about these things more rather than just maybe tweeting about it a little bit uh, sometimes on twitter.com slash Jerome P. Carey. You like that segue? Oh, man. I, I forgot to say subscribe, damn it. Second channel, P. Carey Plays could have an upload today. If not today, definitely tomorrow. And that's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you guys come back for next video. But until next video... See ya!